Greetings again, everyone. We have gathered around the table again today for a look into the little bit of the world of CRKT, uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool Company. We're going to be taking a kind of look into their M16 and M21 lineup and have a look at what that's all about. But first off, let's get into the pocket dump for the day. Dennis's turn. Kind of figured it was going to be yeah. this turn. Mm -hmm. I've been super lazy today. I haven't been doing much, so I've just been carrying the lightweight emissary. Mm -hmm. It's a nice one for just sure. Just in case I needed to cut something today, but I had a fairly relaxed day today, so that was just something late in my pocket. You're going to cut something. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had my turn. It's you guys' is next. I refuse. <laughs> so that's what you say now. <laughs> that's what I hope. You're also abusive. <laughs> Please don't cut each other on film. Um, back to the Sabenza this week. No. You can't tell me what to do. But. <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically you do outrank me. But. And then I did pick up the Leatherman rebar recently, so I'm going to give that one a bit of a shout-out, too. After last week with the controversy of the Leatherman hey, I, Swiss Army. This weekend I saw it on an excellent sale. I couldn't pass it up. And I know it was a bit late, but I thought it... Thought I'd show we it can off see anyway. where your faith lies. <laughs> <laughs> With my it's on the right team. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's like the, the, they did a little bit of poll on my Instagram thing, and it was like fourteen to four so far for the results. I know, and I was the first sack. guy to put the sack on. Like I was easily the first guy because I think yep. it was one hundred percent. I was like, yeah. as soon as I put it on, like that. That's hilarious. And then people did not follow the trend. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> anyway, Paul, what are you carrying? I am carrying the Spartaco Sprint Run. PPT, S90, uh, marble carbon fiber. It's a yeah. nice one. It's pretty, and it, mm -hmm. it's just so nice in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Have you had to sharpen it yet? No. <laughs> I, I've dinged the edge a few times on things that I shouldn't ding the edge on, so I fixed that. But outside of that, I haven't touched, had to touch the edge. It's kind of stropping it out and stuff like That's that. That's exactly it. Stropping's a regular thing for everything that I carry, so. This is one I will give you a hard time about not polishing, because it's S90, so whatever. Yeah, it's just, like, it was slow with the <laughs> yeah. S90 good times. Yeah. And then I've got the massive pocket filling spider coat toad. It doesn't like to stand up. There we go. I love that little thing. It's, it's so cute and adorable and so weird and awkward, and it's growing on me so much. I was going to say it's such a thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is a thing. It looks like the knife that should be in my key bar. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's definitely. Like the knife yeah. Blade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's just tiny and cute. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a box cutter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But in a good way. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. CRKT. Yeah. We're here for some CRKT good times. This is a, this is a one that we want. <laughs> well, he seems to have a Let's do those. method in mind here, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let you take the lead. Well, I mean, these are modern, modification new ones. These are some oh, okay. that have been around for a long time, so I figured we'd start with some ones that have been around yeah, yeah. for a long time. Makes sense. All right. Um, so, CRKT, we're talking about flagship models, M16s, M21s. We're mm -hmm. going to start with the M16s because they were the originators. Yeah, in uh, 99 was when they were debuted originally. 99? Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, um, I heard 97 for some reason. I read 94, 94 in a few places. 94 is when CRKT started. Yes, yeah, that's when yeah. the company themselves was 97 started. was when the KISS came out at Blade Show, and they yeah. like sold four or five times what they had projected. For yeah, the year. KISS knife put them on the map. Yeah. Yeah, in 97. Um, I had just read that somebody picked up their first oh, CRKT M16. It, and it, it was probably 99 be because I also have notes saying Kit Carson started working with CRKT in 98. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That makes sense. So that would make sense that yeah. 99 is okay. when it was debuted. Um, yeah, yeah. So they started in a couple different sizes. Well, a couple of different setups. Yes. Yep. Um, the Tanto was the originator in the mm -hmm. large version, I do believe. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure on which variations were the first to actually come out. There's um, been so many, it's hard to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> first, do we want to get into the man, the the guy who originated flippers, brought sure. him to the modern yeah, world, Kit sure. Carson, and I know mm -hmm. that's going to lead off to... Someone else yakking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, kind of touched base on him a little bit back in our opening factor video that we did a while ago. Um, just because of the flipper tab, it was a brainchild of Kit Carson himself, and it was kind of like a stream of knowledge that kind of got passed down and refined through a couple other people. Um, 
And yeah, he finalized the design in 99, and that's when CR CRKT first started to produce them. Um, Kit himself had started, well, he started making knives way back in like the 70s or something like that, but that's military funny. career got in the way, and he followed that through until the end. Um, what did, I forget what rank he got to you. It's in that Major order. Sergeant? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, Master, master Sergeant. Master yeah. Sergeant, yeah. Yeah, so that's the, the ranking that he retired at in uh, 93, and then he picked up the knife making full time again from there. Yeah, and instantly became a custom knife maker mm -hmm. in yeah, Thailand. So yeah, and yeah, like um, not only wonderful and prolific knife maker, but he was very enthusiastic about teaching. Yeah, and apparently from the '90s onwards, he was very, very instrumental in helping many knife makers get their start, mm -hmm. uh, both online and in person. Yeah, and people like Ken Onion were. People like Ken Onion were uh, directly mentored by him in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I heard that too. About okay. Ken Onion. Onion. <laughs> Ken. Onion. 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 <laughs> he's got a little too Hawaiian. He's just started putting an H and apostrophe at the start of his last name. <laughs> Don't question it. Thank just you. accept it. So they did also come out with a smaller version of a Tanto <laughs> and a mid-size version. Yeah. As well, in between the two smaller Tanto and Sphere Point, a mid size where you could get it both in Tanto and Sphere Point, and then the larger ones, which were just in the Tantos. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you couldn't get a larger Sphere Point, I don't think. It only came in the 13 or the 03 categories. Mm -hmm. Were they offered more towards like the military style? People and yeah. the larger size kind of idea. Uh, yeah, for sure. And and as well as the single guard, they released ones with a dual guard, yeah. and they were the SF, which actually stood for Special Forces. Makes sense on the lettering. So on all of these guys, we've got some letters and some numbers. And for a long time, it was hard to kind of determine what was googly gook and what was actually um, made sense. Well, it all actually kind of makes sense once I figured out the coding behind mm -hmm. it. Um, right off the bat, you'll notice that both of these models have as easy as I tell. Yeah. So the handle yeah. configuration. Without that, the original ones were actually an aluminum handle with a steel liner, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have those. Um, from there, they came out with these, and then they also came out with um, an S version, which was a steel frame. Or maybe just a steel liner frame with a steel liner. I, don't I think know. it's a framework. I think it's a framework. <laughs> I think it's a framework. Mm -hmm. um, with this lock system. I don't know if we want to dabble on that. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, besides the flipper tab that the M16s helped make popular, but they also came out with the auto lock system. So as you open up the knife, there's a little spring loaded tab there that puts a little bar in the way of the liner lock. So when it comes open, you're unable to move the liner lock over unless you hold that tab down first. Some people have claimed that it makes it as strong as a fixed blade. I would argue that. Virtually is what the catalog <laughs> says. Is the, virtually. I have so many different people online talking about it and saying, not virtually, but it will make it as strong as a fixed blade. And I don't think that's the case. Well, it will prevent lock slip to a degree, absolutely. But I don't think it's the same as thing as a solid piece of steel. A couple of years ago, Cold Steel kind of said that, hey, hey, this claim is a little too out there. there. Yeah. <laughs> and Cold Steel said, put your money where your mouth is, and actually had a little CRKT Cold Steel Royal Rumble lawsuit going on. And I think they now changed the terminology in CRKT's catalog because of it. Mm -hmm. I, don't I, refer to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they refer to it as a virtual fixed blade anymore. No. Fair enough. Now, but I do also believe that the core of the case was settled out of court. Yes, so I, think I think so. is what the final, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's what the final outcome was. I think it was on Knife, so. News, Knife News or something. I remember reading about that where they, yeah. it's, like, it's been settled. Mm -hmm. um, so were the, was the auto locks launched with the M16s? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know it is a patent 
that like they have specifically um so i couldn't find it i was trying to find where they changed from the original lock system yeah. and by the way it's the locks is l-a-w-k-s mm -hmm. it stands for oh, thank you. lake <laughs> and walker so ron lake and michael walker mm -hmm. it's the lake and walker knife safety system cool okay so locks is where that comes from and originally it was a manual you could choose to engage it or not to engage it and there are some models today that still use the manual version. yeah we'll get to those yes these ones are referred to as the auto locks because it's spring loaded and, and automatically in puts one it in. of their catalogs they had a timeline on their catalog on when it actually had happened from the lock to the mm -hmm. line lock to the IKBS system to the blah 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 and it had this timeline history I was trying to find it and I couldn't find where they actually switched from the locks to the auto locks but maybe, uh, fail. Uh, maybe we'll get some bloopy dates and see what we can find <laughs> I mean he yeah. didn't punch the camera so you got to <laughs> <laughs> this is true this there's, is some, true. there's some credit there yeah, he, he hasn't lost as many points I'm pretty sure I can't get <laughs> drunk enough to make up for what you did tonight <laughs> Don't don't take that challenge to heart. <laughs> Johnny's golf tournament last night. I'm not doing any of that. That's anyway, all right. So yes, originally it was manual. They changed to auto locks. And do we want to touch on materials for blade steel around that time? Yeah, we might as well yeah. get into that just before we get too far off. Yeah. Of it. Uh, so they started with OS four, OS six. Um, yeah. I'm sure the rep the reputations of those steels speak for themselves. <laughs> of course. But. Um, it, very very fine grained steels, but they don't really hold an edge nearly as long mm -hmm. as um, well a lot of the steels that came later. It was definitely made to be a budget lap. Yeah. yeah. But I have seen reviews on this thing from like ten years ago and fifteen years ago where people were talking about buying them for thirty five dollars and stuff like that. Yeah, right? like that's an amazing yeah. price. I would, I would actually <laughs> place make the argument that for an EDC it may not be the best deal, but in a war zone where it's a knife on your hip. Specifically, as a last ditch. Oh shit! It's something and, abusable. Yeah, and you're not. So, it's not yeah. something that you're using every day, so you're yeah, yeah. keeping it sharp, sharp, sharp. And I will say that I have knives in Oz Four that they work. It's just you have to maintain them. Mm -hmm. You That's have it. to sharpen them if you're going to be using them. But if you're going to do it, I mean, it takes nothing to sharpen all yeah. four eyes. So no, right. it really doesn't. And you know, that's actually a pretty good thought. I yeah. wondered why would they go for such a soft steel, but I think that actually makes they, a lot no, of sense. No, but you get to a certain softness where the trade-off for putting the work to put a new edge doesn't make up for the four cuts that you're going to get before yeah. it goes dull again. What like, there's this line. What I'm arguing, though, is the idea that as a like self-defense knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, it's on your hip. As a tactical, and this I, was designed as a tactical blade. That's mm -hmm. exactly, sure. that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got jipping on the back, it's got the double lock system, it's got the flipper which is a guard, and the double flipper which people were talking about. This reminds me of a Bowie knife that you've got, or yeah. a K-bar that yeah. had that style of guard to it, right? So, it makes me wonder which models came with the OS 6 and which came with the OS 4. I couldn't find it. It was all OS 4 to begin with, and they, modded, they jumped between oh, OS okay. 6 and the 8CR 13. And that's when they started to jump back between the OS 6s, also the same time that they started to get into the ACRs. I heard that in a video today that it was ACR 19 MOV. Okay, they've used a lot of variations, okay. but yeah. never 19 to my knowledge. Really? Uh, 813, 814, and 850. They've <laughs> thrown into the jungle. I am not going to call out the person whose video I watched today. Um, I, could, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I know a lot about all of this oh, yeah. good times yeah. in history, and I don't think CR KT's ever used 9CR18. There was a knife called an M18. It was, it was 8CR19, I, I could have sworn. It was still 8CR, but it was yeah, a Yeah, a 19 MOB. And yeah. there is one of those out there, and it's the closest thing to like a 440C type of steel, right? Yeah. Um, but yes, I... Yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> whoever <laughs> this viewer is. Or, or, or YouTuber. Yeah. yeah. Is, but yeah. To my knowledge, 13s, 14s, and 15s. Yeah, well known about yeah. definitely an upgrade from the previous steels. Yes. <laughs> um. So I don't know. Where do we want to go from here? Do we want to talk about uh, the increased demand for more? Oh, one thing I wanted to dabble on actually with the locks and the auto lock system because <laughs> we were talking about the timeline yeah. on that. Just for the record, um, Kit Carson does not use the locks and the auto lock system in his custom made knives. No, he does not. Also, just for the record, 
neither do Ron Lake or Michael Walker, <laughs> two guys that invented this system. That's um, awesome. And they so tell you something. The system that the, all three of these people are most known for, both for the M16s with the Donna locks, and the two guys invented it, do not use this secondary <laughs> lock in their mm -hmm. own knives. This is a CRKT brain child. I was surprised by how much these didn't look like the custom models. Yeah, there's you know a bit I mean? like, of a departure. The, the, in basic shape, they're the same, but outside of that, like there's not the whole pattern in them and stuff yeah, like that. The M21, like even Kit Carson has said, and how different the M21 looks from the custom. The back end is different and varied, and yeah, like there's a wide variance between the customs and what CRKT yeah. finalized as the designs. One guy actually said, really funny, and I totally agree with him, that they, they skeletonized the wrong part of the knife. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The liners should be the things that are skeletonized. And the Zytel, maybe some texturing, maybe some mm -hmm. but... Maybe the thought is you want stronger liners, so you're not going to remove mass from the things that add strength. Could be, but when you're talking about something that's potentially supposed to be reducing weight, the yeah, uh, still yeah, a better option yeah. than a K bar yeah, is got, probably what they're thinking. You've got a, you've yeah. got a good point there, where the solid frame is mm -hmm. heavy duty use. Yeah, yeah. So I actually spent time today going through the website counting how many <laughs> models are current. So did I. So did I. Um, <laughs> so did we get the same number? I got thirty seven for the M sixteen. Um, Just M sixteen. Yeah, and then yeah, forty five in total is about what I got. So that would be... Yeah, I counted actually 36 for the M16s and 10 for the M21s, but there are so many different models all over the place. I got 37 and 8. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you got 36 Not including and 10. 10. Not including stuff that was discontinued specifically. Yeah. Now, did you count the orange ER versions? Yep, I did. Okay. Because those are the two that are actually not in the same section in the in the catalog mm -hmm. as the rest of the M16s and the M21s. If you're yeah, so catalogs. yeah, they yeah. they've got so many different wide variety of these guys. Um, it's a little hard to flip through the catalogs and online to exactly see how many they have, which is why we got different numbers. But yeah, that's it. At least forty-five different varieties in production currently of these guys. And I wouldn't be surprised if the models that I was looking at also had different color variations on top of. You know what I mean? No, no, they I they categorize them. Okay, right, they got specific yeah. part numbers. So yeah. leading into colors, they've got desert tan. Mm -hmm. Yes. They will have a D on the end of their letter. No. Are coding? Yeah, yeah. those yeah. words. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, the skew on the end of the knife will have the D for the desert tan ones, right? <laughs> Does it have um, a C for copper? So I can't remember what they designated for copper. No, there's no C. They no. still do a D on that one. Do they? For the desert tan version mm -hmm. of... Oh, it's the but it's like it handles desert tan, but the blade has got like a copper wash. No, really no, pretty. it had like a bronzy one almost yeah. thing at yeah. one point in time. I don't know what the lettering was for that one. I don't remember, but it was only around for a couple of years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then while we're talking about that, you uh, you figured out the the one coding system for why all of this makes sense, and it's right. on one of the knives we're checking out right now. Exactly, and uh, so the, it's got a black blade on it. You would expect that to be a B. In the coding system, it's not. The K stands for black because no other color um, ends. No other color has, or no other color starts with K or ends with K. Ends with K. Yeah. There because black doesn't start with K. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, but I mean, there's, 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 not, there's yeah. not any other color that starts with K, so you're not gonna have to worry about finding a color that starts with. Like, like blue and brown are both Bs as well, so yeah. it makes saying. sense as a substitute. Yeah, as okay. a K, so it ends in K. Because nothing else is going to come up as a K. And mm -hmm. I've read that nothing else ends in K. Just the, I don't know about the beginning. If one of our more creative viewers knows <laughs> something with a K. Yeah, I'm sitting here flipping through my head. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I don't think I did too. Yeah. I didn't end. I mean, your so-called standard colors, I think you're safe with a K. That's where I'm going with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's colors out there that start with K. No, 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 K, K is for purple. Like, what are you doing? Now, <laughs> on those numbers and letters as well, we've got a 04 or a 14Z. There is also a 04Z. Same with the 10s as well as the 11s or the 12s or the 13s. The one 
And I figured this out on my own. This was not in research. I had a light bulb go off, flip through catalogs, Ding. flip back through catalogs, flip through catalogs again. It was like, oh, that is what it is. <laughs> the one stands for the serrations. That makes sense. Oh. And an O4Z is exactly the same as a 1-4Z, but it's a plain edge compared to a serrated blade. Mm. What's the code on that? I can't quite see it. O1 KZ. Oh, now, I don't believe that they have a, Oh, they do have an 11. I've seen 11 KSF with the Tanto frame lock, the little baby frame lock that we saw with the mm. dual guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has... Well, that has serves. Have 11, 11 KSF. Yeah. So it does have a half serrated. Yeah, yeah. So the only, that's what the one actually stands for itself is the half serrated version. The Z's for Zytel? Zytel yeah. handle. They had a T for titanium. Do they have a G for G10? No. They do. Was there, oh yeah, there is. Yeah. No, there is, yeah. yes. Yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yes, it is a G for G10. <laughs> yes. Um, S for stainless steel. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, is it an A for aluminum? Blank for aluminum, right? Blank. That was the standard model, so yeah. they didn't give it a letter. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, those were variants, so that's why you got letters. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Um, what else? I think yeah. that pretty much covers all of the lettering. The e oh, okay, here's some one thing. They make an orange variation mm -hmm. that is an ER, which very obviously is emergency rescue. Mm -hmm. So they came out in 2011, they came out with an emergency rescue that was the 14ZLEK. Yep. Other than the Z, which is Zytel, I can't find what LEK stands for. Law enforcement? Knife? That maybe. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's the most logical thing. And maybe we can loop that whether <laughs> Joe's right or Joe's wrong, and then the answer of Joe's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> Or just Joe's right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense, too, as a law enforcement knife, because you can get them in black as well as the orange, mm -hmm. right? Like, we've carried the black handle one. Yeah. Well, there's and the I, line cutter, there's the serrations, there's the glass punch. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. It's like a... So, yeah. the orange one is just an M16 that's orange. There's no seatbelt cutter, there's no window punch. It's just that's an weird. M16 that's orange. Weird. Yeah. Very weird. So it was just high vis is all they went for <laughs> on that one. Because that's what you want in knife. And I don't know when the orange came out compared to when the actual rescue version came out, but I'm pretty sure the orange was a predecessor because I got old catalogs that have mm -hmm. the orange one in it. So I think they make the rescue one in orange now too, though. I'm pretty sure I saw on the website. No, I think now what they've done is they've changed the ER to be in Z, oh. a, Z, a Z lac OR or something for orange or something. That like actually sounds it. familiar. I think I've actually seen that code. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean, but we still, you can still get them in black. Of letters. Uh, it's getting so <laughs> dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you can still get them in black, and that's the color common variation. We all did research. Why are we yes. here? <laughs> yeah. We all did research. <laughs> we have notes. Yeah. <laughs> So I think that pretty much sums up the M16s, goes into the evolution of... Do we want to talk about the weight? Oh, yeah, we totally sure. do. Yeah. We only have the Zytel model, so we don't have stainless steel weights, we don't have titanium weights. But even just size variant. But they go up from here. And I can't quite see it from here. All right, oh, weights. 6.24. You're the one in front of it. You can't see No, no, no. Not unless I, like, stick my head oh, like this. 6.24. 6.24. Yeah. Uh, so as far as the size comparison goes, hold up, it turned off. There you go. 4.44 for the sides of the titanium. No steel or anything else except for the blades. So. And that's two. Two point four three. That's a very EDC friendly size. That's an idea on a lightweight carry tonight. Two point oh. So it's slightly. So it's Osborne weight more or yeah, less. Right? That's, that. not, that's not bad at all. It's Osborne size. It size makes sense. Exactly. Slightly smaller, yeah. but yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's. Yeah. Oh, just in the interest of uh, size compare. Oh, here it is. Just in you've the got a leather neck on your head yeah. for size <laughs> comparison. Hey, no, no. Jesus, no, you've that, got a leather a... neck. On oh your no, head. no, it's a recon <laughs> test. Recon it's a scout. Oh, oh, a sorry, recon, recon scout. scout. Yeah. It's even bigger than a leather neck. Just by mistake. Way of <laughs> How dare you? Two point four two. Oh, okay, so yeah. not bad. Next. Just because these are so close in size, mm -hmm. I thought, why not? And Joe carries enough for a small army on him. He does so, at all times. It's, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, okay. So that leads us into... So, 
So yeah, after a couple years of the M16 lineup being out and available, there was a demand for slight variances, a slightly beefier, beefier version. Um, what have you found out about the um, again? Apparently there had been requests, and I'm not f sure from who, but it that does actually say from CRKT that there was requests with the spear point version, but with a deeper belly and possibly a recurve. Mm -hmm. And CRKT delivered. And the birth. The M21 lineup. It makes sense. The bayonet blade is fun, but it's not the world's sliciest. And that's actually the, the common comment I heard from a lot of reviewers that I was watching with this week's episode and just getting other people's opinions and things like that is that they're not even talking about the M21, but just talking about the M16. There wasn't much belly on it, so they go with the Tanto because they can get more practical chore use out of a Tanto. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even YouTube reviewers that weren't even talking about the M21 were really asking for an M21 without even knowing it type of thing, right? Yeah. So, and again, original version was aluminum with steel mm -hmm. liners. That makes sense. And that was just the O2 or the O4. So they realized there was a demand for both sizes because of the demand for both sizes in the M16 world mm -hmm. at that point. This is the first one to put on the table that has a four-way pivotal... Uh, no, not sure. Nope. Nope. Look at this. this. Are they do too? Yep. That one does, this one does not. Okay. <laughs> you said you did homework this week. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it on this side. I didn't see this. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there's a lot of holes to... Yeah, to us lefties, you. we love you guys. Thanks, yeah. CRKT. We love you. Mm -hmm. Rake knives, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> CRKT's beating you, goddammit. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Steel quality, you gotta beat, yeah. so right now it's a draw. Anyway, yeah. um, and very interesting that they don't machine. I actually left my pocket, this one, this version is mine, I own this one, and I actually left it that way to highlight the fact that, yeah, they mm -hmm. don't machine out But they went tip down on these carries. Yeah, yeah, this is this is how they come out of box. Out yeah. of box, they do come tip down. Yeah, A lot of knives do like that, though. And with a knife that was inception, inceptioned <laughs> in, in yes. 1999, there's layers. It's like an onion. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, not surprising that it comes tip down. Would that explain the paramilitary too? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To a degree. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's around the same. Yeah. Um, with the tip down carry. Um, Comparative weights? Um, well, I was going to jump in to pull out the calipers and oh, yeah, comparative sure. thicknesses. Oh, I did mention that oh, yeah. the M21s yeah. came out as a little bit beefier of an option. And um, definitely steel thickness yeah. as much as handle thickness, mm -hmm. for sure. Handle off the pocket clip is 11.5. And that's for the M16 millimeters? Yeah. 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 No inches. 11.5 <laughs> yeah. inches. 13.5. Uh, <laughs> so, two, so just over two mils thicker for the handle and then the blade steel. More important, you can blade steel on this here. Dock, we're going at, wow, that's slight, that's thinner than I thought, 2.4. 3.5. Yeah, about 3.0. So, yeah, definitely beefed up or into the M21 lineup compared to the M16s. Yeah, that was all millimeters. 2.4 mils and 3 mils. Okay. No, it was inches. <laughs> we went over this already. <laughs> I already gave him shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's that thick. <laughs> Absolutely. You're that thick. Yep. <laughs> Let's not go. Oh, one of those things where you realize what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really going too far. Can't take it back. Just, uh, just keep going with it. Just keep going. It's on record now. So the original ones did not have the Gs because yep. these are, and they found a demand for an EDC version. That was slightly more lightweight and mm -hmm. grippy friendly and skeletonized all the way through the steel liners, <laughs> unlike <laughs> it. You know, yeah, to the point where, yeah, perhaps to the detriment of the liner, it actually has, and you can kind of see, I don't know how bad it is on that model, but the liner. The liner lock faces actually are, uh, or yeah. not the face. This huh. one does Oh, no. part of the lock bar. The lock bar itself is right. pretty heavily machined. <laughs> this one does not at all. It's actually only pretty much one way through. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Well, I guess it's too small to really... Oh, there's a little bit down near the base, but not, not much. Oh, I see right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Down yeah. near the base, yeah. he says. There's a hole. <laughs> We're trying not to um, do these things. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> We got the M21s covered. I think that's everything yeah. that yeah. needs to be said about the M21s. Um, 
Yeah, and they came up with some variants. And we've got a couple of the variations. Um, there was the midsize, and this is actually the midsize. It's the same size that they had. This will actually have room to put it in the middle. For the three variation, because we've got the ones. We've got the two size, and there was a tanto in the two size. We've got the threes now, and we've got the four size, which the fours were known as the big dog. Yep. The we were talking about three lots before. That one's a free lot. Yes, so these are the newest variations, and we've got the O3 model. Neither has any version of the locks, secondary lock. <laughs> so now, knowing that we now know what we now know, because that's got to be a red X on somewhere. <laughs> anyway. Um, that's, that's the whole chorus, just that over and over. The, the letters and the numbers now make sense of why those now have mm -hmm. the letters and the numbers that they have. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the K and the S type of thing. Because they are back to a stainless steel frame lock, and yeah. they're black, so they get the mm -hmm. K. Interesting uh, change in the clip. Mm -hmm. Short, wide, as opposed to the long skin. <clears throat> I kind of yes. dig it. Yeah, it's a nice, yeah, it's a nice change up. Yeah, I don't mind it at all, and it's a shorter clip. It's not long. It's, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. these were very utilitarian. They were just not flared, right? Like it's. Yeah. I've brought it up a billion times, but holes in clips usually kind of throw me for like cheaper knives. The way that these ones are done, they have like a roundness to the holes. Yeah, that they they chaffered the inside of the edges. Yeah, sort of thing. yeah. they finish them off nicely. Yeah. And it, it takes that that feeling away. Uh, the thing that I really like about the clip and the holes in it is they match the scales and the holes yeah, that they yep. took out yeah. because it's the large hole in the middle with the two smaller holes surrounding it. That's what they did for the clips as well, so it's it's all matching. Well, it pleases me. Chamfered and chamfered <laughs> too. Yep. And as a lefty, again, we got a four-way clip going on, mm -hmm. so we thought about it. And that also and pleases me. And after all this time, they have it straight away from the flathead pivot, which we didn't talk about earlier. I love just about to mention that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've done that all the way through. Mm -hmm. Which and, is super nice, And lock, lock down on the backside. You can't see it on very many of the models because they've got the clip in the way. Yeah. Um, Joe's? Yeah, Joe's is the only one that you can see that it's... It is keyed. It's just a D-style uh, tag. I'm, I'm sure these are going to be the same. Chances are, yeah. Yeah, because these look like the they're just do. flat instead. Um, change the blade steel too. Yeah, uh, that's, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. yeah, they they switched it up a little bit to a slightly improved steel. I'd like to see them go a step or two further, but <clears throat> but at least it's an improvement. They it's actually took a step. It's a start. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so uh, we're now we're rocking 12C27 sandbag. I'm gonna Yay! be honest with you. It might legitimately be my favorite budget steel. 12C27? Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. a good choice for sure. After experiencing the Ruik in particular, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah the Ruik, yeah. um, Rake, whatever. No. I, honestly, to say. I honestly think D2 is going to get cheaper and cheaper. Oh, no so, doubt. We see that happening a lot with other Chinese and Taiwanese already. producers, yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised. I would be stoked to get a D2 version of the Tong. That would be nice. Perfect. For sure. Just, um, the thing that I really like about that steel, though, the 12C, is just sharpability. Mm -hmm. And how fine that steel is, you get a really nice fine edge. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> very key. We were talking about Oz4, and I was complaining about it not having the trade-off of the, the polish compared to the cutting performance. And that's the one thing I'll say about the Sandvik, is it's enjoyable to put that polish back on. It doesn't take much, mm -hmm. and you can get some decent cutting performance out of it. And you so, can do like all of or most of your polishing literally just on a strop. I was, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, stropping is gonna be huge for that type of steel, and I think that's a huge step in the right direction. I mean, obviously, maybe we'd be a little bit happier at 14C, but maybe of course, maybe that's asking a little bit much. And I got a comment: went cheaper on the price points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the frame lock. Yeah. Well, like, uh, one less patent to pay for? Yeah. With maybe. the auto locks. Yeah. 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 Maybe. No more locks, no more scales. You're way, there's less hardware involved. Uh, ease of machining. And yeah, the program is exactly time. the same as all the titanium handled ones. So to produce these, it's not like they needed to create anything mm -hmm. new. They just bought a new material to mill it out of. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong too, but stainless steel would be easier to machine than titanium. Wouldn't it be? Would well, it be there's process? some difficulties with it. Titanium is a little bit softer. It tends to be a bit more gummy. Titanium is still a monster to, monster to machine, though. Um, okay. I, long answer, short answer. It, it basically, <laughs> it just depends, really. Um, As a general rule, I would guess stainless steel would be easier. Less gummy, faster speed, uh, machining speeds is what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in, in terms of milling, yeah. The chamfering would take almost no time at all, that sort of thing. And speaking of the chamfering, 
I got to comment on that. All of the M16 models, even the titanium ones and the stainless steel ones, they've done a nice job on smoothing these, rounding these edges mm -hmm. for ergonomics. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, they certainly have. And even on the titanium ones, you got to give them credit for doing a nice rounding job yeah. on it. I went to go close this, yeah, and anyway. my middle finger immediately went up to go for the auto lock that wasn't there. Oh man, that's funny. Um, okay, you can still thump with them. Oh, not, <laughs> easy, sometimes. Not, not easily on this one. But it's still a nice solid rotation. Oh yeah, if you take your time, yeah. it's not bad. Because a lot of people were talking about it just as a, a stop pin, a, a blade stop, and and that's really its primary function. But there's no mm -hmm. reason why you can't get. It. They did texture it enough. Yeah. You can yeah. get behind it and give it enough of a pop, right? Like it's oh maybe so, I can. That one I think is. Right I think it's yeah. because it's smaller. It, you, it's a little bit more difficult. This one, my old one, is the big dog. Yeah, it's easy, harder to keep it positioned. And again, you just that old school. Mess. That one's more broken in too. It helps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Track. oh, that one's not bad. But you also have a lot more mass in the blade. Yeah. But, I mean, seeing as how the kit carries some designs, you're really not doing it justice unless you're flipper in it anyway. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that is the more fun way to open the knife anyhow. At least for me. I'd say so. So, yeah, they came out with variations. I think it's, it's a good improvement. I'd like to see this steel in other steels or other handle configurations yeah. out of the 45s. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking. Um... So as far as ergonomics goes, um, me personally, I, the M21s for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you obviously would go with the, the four size, mm -hmm. the big dog size. You'd right? prefer this thickness over that guy? Yeah. Usually I do like a little bit of a more hand filling rather than the slim profile. Let's let me verify that. Yeah. Yeah, I like the thicker scales. Yeah, that's gonna be a little more jabby. Yep. See, I don't. That's not horrible for my hands, but even mm -hmm. I actually prefer the size on this guy with that thinness. This feels a little bit more appropriate. Yep. Um, yeah. Proportionally speaking, I think I do like the thinness of, of the smaller ones. Yeah. Like I don't like how thick the yeah, little right. M21s are. It's just too chunky in my mind. When it's I picked really nice. when yeah. I picked mine up however many years ago, that was actually a deciding factor. Was like that just feels better in the hand once it's over. I yeah. will I will say this the where the the, the thumb stud rests in there can become a little bit of a hot spot for sure because it's not a finger choil, but you, mm -hmm. your, your, your brain to wants to think it's a finger choil, and then it just kind of ends up digging in, right? Like it's Let's so. See. Let me see on the frame lock one again there. Mom's got me. <laughs> Watch yourself. Yeah, it's a lot more noticeable on the frame lock one compared to one with the Zytel or G10 scales yeah. on it for sure. I was going to say, like, I this doesn't even factor in even when I'm being conscious about it, even when I'm squeezing in, that I don't really yeah. care. Um, but for the frame yeah, lock, kind of okay, ones. yeah, whoa, actually, that's a huge hot spot right yeah, it's there. Yeah, very noticeable. It's a little noticeable on there, but this is also a big enough knife. I'm thinking about the smaller one, and it might dig in more. Dude, um, I'm talking this one. specifically at no, this No, it's not near me as bad. Try with this the frame one, lock. This one does dig in here, the smaller version. I find it protrudes more. The bigger one, you can kind of change your grip enough that it doesn't yeah, bother you anymore. Awkward. Uh, this is. I was just playing with this. Oh, I thought you were saying you were talking about this one. Yeah. That one feels not bad, actually. That one was jabbing me pretty good. Yeah, this okay. one's pretty jabby. So I, I do think. notice that that is kind of a con in my mind. Is mm -hmm. yeah. even just like just yeah. holding yeah. it hurts. <clears throat> if I do have one negative con on the grip, it's that this didn't necessarily. They could have shallowed that out and still had it nested in properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That. They didn't have to make it this extreme. It's almost like it's a design thing at that point yeah. and not a function. It was aesthetically looked better, but if they had a smooth that out, it probably would have improved the grip. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have the jimping on the surface of it, I would assume that it was designed specifically as a stop pin at that point and that you're not supposed to get your finger on it. But the jimping does say to me, hey. Um, they were talking about... Kit Carson, Kit Carson's texturing on the thumb studs. Yeah. So that actually could be something that is his jam. I'm gonna say in, 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 in a pinch yeah. grip, in a pinch grip, having my thumb on top of the pivot and on top of the thumb stud, it, that actually locks in very nicely. Fair enough. And across all the different models I've noticed that we've handled tonight, um, it's the same sort of deal where mm. 
I mean, with the G10, that also is the, the whole thing's gritty. But the same idea applies even across the Zytels, which is kind of surprising to me. I will also say these base model versions, good for EDC carry, mm -hmm. but as far as heavy duty use, I have I have some hesitations about how much I can probably flex this flex this knife if I needed to. But that's kind of like saying I yeah. <laughs> yeah. a smaller M16. I do find EDC use, and that's fine. We can use it for EDC use, mm -hmm. and it's like me saying I'm going to hard use my emissary because obviously I'm not going to. Difference yeah. is I know I'm buying a gentleman's carry, and this isn't necessarily a gentleman's no. carry. I was going to say that. Um, but do these ones flex as much as the little guys do? I will say mine in particular actually does have a bit of flex. I was whacking it pretty hard in the backyard. I was whacking it pretty hard in the backyard with the auto locks disabled, just like yeah, this. Yeah, you were. Um, <laughs> well, I was leaving dents in the wood I was in, and but it doesn't have flex like my Hanway sword. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. And that'd be silly for you to assume that. It um, but anyway, yeah. um, I've, I couldn't get this to fail, and I've never been in fear of it actually failing on me. In terms of actually cutting things, two giant stop pins preventing this from rotating into the handle, I'm perfectly uh, confident in it. And they did come out with, like, kind of touch base earlier in the episode, they did come out with the M21 guys as a beefier option. So even in the smaller EBC sort of size, you can get a little bit of a tougher knife. But I think my big thing is with the smaller, the the O one K or the O ones or the whatever, the eleven no. KSF is a, is a steel frame, but the Zytale handled ones in particular, even the bigger M sixteen, for some reason it just feels like a much more solid design. Yeah. It's the same, like it's a thicker, it's a beefy version. It's gonna be <laughs> thicker across the board. Yeah. Right? This is basically trying to be a dress knife, but it's still trying to be a tactical. It's a tactical dress knife, which doesn't... That you can is, buy in yeah. a hardware store. The yeah, contradiction is yeah. And it's fine. Like, honestly, if for guys I know that don't need anything else, but they're like 9 to 5 normal job... I think I got a little sliver or something I was just getting poked at. Oh, well, that's what you get for one carpet, yep, I guess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, that don't need anything except for EDCs, very small tasks that work fine, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as the reliability, even in the Zytel models and the mm -hmm. M16s compared to the M21s, I trust the big dogs. I trust the, the three size series yep. as well as the four size series. When it comes to the one size series, <laughs> it is really just a very light duty knife. You're going to buy a $25 or a $30 knife and you know that's what you're going to be getting. Uh, and that's American pricing, I think. So Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just verifying something. Um, but yes, I would I would lean towards upgrading towards an M21. Yeah. If I had my choice, or they do make a smaller cantoed version of this. <laughs> if they made this exact knife with the M21 blade, I'd probably buy that. Um, well, they, I like the handle and everything. They make it. a small aluminum handled version of this and a small titanium handled version of that. Hmm. So that Is might be one of those forty-five that you were looking at. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a frame off. Titanium yeah. frame off. Yes. Yeah. With the O2T would be the variance that you'd yeah. be looking for. Yeah. So I, I think we had played with the O4 or 14 Ts mm -hmm. at one point. In the three series? Or is it the one series? No, because they have 21s they, the they so. only make in the two size. They don't have three sizes. See, and that, that's what I'm saying. I like the three series, but with that blade. Yeah. And so I, they, they may not make it, but nice. mm -hmm. so, if yeah. I was to buy one, that would be the combination that I would want. Yeah. Do you, I like the 3 Series 2, but I do find that the Tanto with the double guard looks really weird in mm -hmm. that series. Yeah. It's way too much guard for too short of a knife. Yeah. Yeah, the double guards really belong on the 4 Series, the Big Dog Series, I think, in my mind. The yeah. ethos makes sense in that regard as well. And even the smaller one, the Tanto with the double guard on the bottom... Uh, I guess there's a couple of practical applications for that small of a knife with a dual guard, but... Mm -hmm. If if you need more than a single guard in the first place, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one too many guards. It's for a pocket knife. Yeah, yeah. That's why you carry a recon scout, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, like it's been mentioned twice. <laughs> no, um, no, that's slippers, not what this video is about. Slippers poke out enough as they do, and then you add one to the back side of the blade as well. Mm. And I can just imagine trying to EC that okay. in my pocket. But 
designated originally for tip down carry, thinking about how a soldier might carry something like this and a flak jacket and a mag pouch, dual guard's probably not going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be like me where the flipper is going to be buried deep in your pocket. It's going to be at the very top. That's fair. And it probably won't be in your pants. It'll, it'll, it'll be on a vest. I just automatically default to tip up. Well, because mm -hmm. you're a sane human being. But <laughs> okay, so and I'm not in the military. One thing yeah. that actually Benchmade pointed out on the last video with one of their newest knives coming out, the SOCP folder, it's tip down because when you're deploying it, you can instantly use it for the window breaker application. And I thought about that more and more. And to me, honestly, that does actually make sense in a rescue version. And because these ones mm -hmm. do have rescue versions, mm -hmm. That's the one application I've been thinking about that more and more. And to me, yeah. that actually seems logical. That in some situations, you might not want to pull your knife out deployed. It might be a matter of time. And I mean, there's only situations when you're punching a window that it probably time matters. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. having to flip your knife over into another position. So not saying I would personally do it. I wouldn't even worry so much about the time in that case, but just flipping it and potentially dropping it. Yeah, would yeah. Be, fumbling it. Yeah, yeah. instead be, of just deploying it and striking. That's the only yeah, argument. Right. So I could buy that. Yeah, yeah I'm starting to lean more and more towards the logic behind tip, it's specific specific tip down instances. for specific. Yeah. yeah, for EDC though, gotta say tip up. Mm -hmm. Still right. very much, so. very much. So. All of my knives are tip up for a reason. Yeah. 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 If no, it's not. It. That's not true. My mini skirt is just tip down. I was going to say, if you can help it. One way yeah. carry, and I love the knife too. That's not to, Yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. so. If you could have any version, which one would you take? Like um, out, of, out of here, or. Just if you could have any combination of him <clears> and. Um, before we go into any combination, because it's probably going to be mentioned in this, do we want to throw the two, the limited edition one that they did? So <laughs> in 2014. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kit Carson passed away. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, September fifth of twenty fourteen. Uh, I I do believe Parkinson's was and there's mm -hmm. Parkinson's foundations even on CRKT's website that you can yeah. donate to towards yeah. that and we'll help in the cause. And even put a link in there for anyone who feels like donating. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Just through CRKT, not even through us. It's yeah. Just, yeah. We'll do it through them because it's the right thing to do. Um, but they uh, came up with commemorative. M16. And it was basically this version right here, actually, is the closest thing to it. It was a stainless steel frame lock, or no, titanium, sorry. Titanium frame lock with a gamma steel blade. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were limited edition to 200 pieces, and we can bloop one of those up there because it's a pretty knife. It's worth showing yeah. off, for sure. Um, and RWL means, or uh, gamma steel, sorry, means RWL 34 and something else in their steel. <laughs> I'm so anyway, whatever they're twisting in their steels. But it's good stuff. It's mm -hmm. yeah. It's and, a fantastic knife. Yeah, it's that was the one I was gonna say. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. And especially if I could get like the sort of M twenty one blade shape instead of a Tanto version. That, for sure. And that's what I'm saying, is like ultimate fantasy model. Yeah. They have so many different models at this point that Yeah. Why mm -hmm. not combine yeah. them? Figure out what you want yourself. I mean if I got my pick of steels I'd be tempted to do something like M4, but out of what's out there, I'd have to agree. They do also have an auto 154CM version mm -hmm. that yes. us as Canadians do not get to play with because we're Canadians and buttons are scary things in our world. Ah! <laughs> they might have. <laughs> it's they not have. spring assisted. It. It's buttons. Uh, I'm touching. Else. I'm touching the thing. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay because I'm touching it. But I'm not going to complain, because I actually have one of those right now, and it might get worse. So let's just take this one step at a time in Canada. <laughs> um, I mean, realistically, if it wasn't the law, the 154 auto version would be pretty awesome, because 154 yeah. CM and a steel for our line, oh, our line blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I like the format. I, I love the format. You could take knife. away the auto and just make it a normal flipper with that knife, and you'd probably mm -hmm. put a CRPG flipper in my hand. Does so the it's... auto have a flipper? Does it have a flipper tab or a guard? I thought it didn't. I, I don't know. We'll, have to, take, we'll have to take a look. Okay. Since we're combining things here, the auto with the damn steel, titanium, but that blade. What, on. what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> just, just going extreme. Okay, let's go, I, real, I totally let's go realistic because the ones that are in. Realistically, are I would go with the one of 200 made. A, a, big, a big dog version in orange, Z Lek. Of course, in orange. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> so. 
Ultimate M16, obviously a commemorative one. I think we can all agree on yeah. that. Yeah. The very close second, and I might even take it over the other one because as much as I like the frame locks, um, the titanium frame locks with the damage steel, it's a beautiful knife, don't get me wrong. But the thinness of them, I think the auto is a thicker handle. I believe so. I believe. Yeah. And it I makes believe sense. It would have the aluminum scales with a steel liner on it. Plus the chance to get a freebie on an auto would be. No, nice, I don't but... even care. De auto it, make it normal flipper, and it was just 154 cm. Mm. Make it a doable thumb stud because it doesn't have a flipper tab yeah. already. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, that's it's it's a good looking knife, and 154 is nothing to sneeze at. No. Carve out this area a little bit more so you can uh, get your finger on the yeah. thumb stud. Yeah. No. And get rid of that obnoxious hot spot in yeah. the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds with one stone right there. Indeed. Um, but anyway, I think that might round us out. I think yeah. so. Yeah, 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 I think so. We've gone over the history. One thing we didn't talk about, and it's not up here, is VEF serrations. Oh, yes, oh, yes, we yes. didn't talk about the VEF. We can talk about it quickly. Throw yeah. up a picture of the VEF serrations. I can't remember what year um, they actually came out. No, I, I saw that information today, but I didn't make a note of it, so I can't remember. No, me neither. Yeah, um, the VEF serrations were created by a gentleman called Tom VEF. Um, oh, his yeah. idea was to make an angled almost hook to help aid in trapping material into the hook to aid in the cutting. Similar to how a recurve would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, setting them at a uh, 15 degree angle is kind of what he found. 15 to be, or 50? Oh, 50. Yes, 5 zero. I, I miss said that for sure. So one of the things that you notice, and we only have one variation that's a half serrated here, is the bevel on the half serrated version, the silver part, as it were, if, right? <laughs> um, the part that does all the cutting. Is quite high. I, I don't know exactly what angle we're sitting at on that, but I'm guessing it's thinner than a 20. I'm guessing a 17. Backside is very much just like a, a back bevel polished almost to chisel grind, even though it mm -hmm. is hollow in here as well. Um, whereas the rest of them that are plain edge have much more of an even bevel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the the grind or, or the actual bevel is kind of almost offset to compensate the serrations. It kind of makes sense you would follow that same line all the way through, right? And you, well, and you notice it on the VEF serrations as well. Mm -hmm. Anything with the VEF, you also notice it with that very high polish. Now, people talk about the, the way it's aiding and cutting and this and that, and I kind of have to call them out on the fact that it's pretty much just an easier way to keep the, a similar angle on your high serrations, and then keeping the back angle, because you really only want serrations to be single beveled anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. that gives you an excuse not to be able to sharpen the backside of the serrations at the same time you're not sharpening the backside of the rest of your knife, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I personally kind of think it's just a lazy excuse that we're going to get away with only polishing mm -hmm. one side while we're serrating these ones in the first place. Other companies don't necessarily do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because the logic would be that you would do it on these ones as well, even though they were plain edge, and you would see that semi chisel grind there if yeah. it had that practical application that some people might be trying to justify with with that kind of sharpening. I wonder if that aids in the the problem that people have with the VEF serrations being that they're thin and they tend to roll. Mm -hmm. Is that because they're a single bevel? Like if they were dual beveled, would they have the same problems? A little bit more support, you would think, with more material behind the edge. Yeah. With the VEF serrations themselves? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think because it's so high, if you were doing the same thing on the other side, it would become just even thinner at that point. It should but you would lose a lot of that steel. Like, they might be higher into the knife. Yeah. He's so worried, like, yeah, he's worried about, like, rolling the edge more often like, than not. Because, like, gut hooks don't roll that much, right? In theory? Well, that's, no, but... It's a series hooks, of gut hooks on it. It is, but the difference between a gut hook is it's almost impossible to get something hard up in there and rather than dirt and rock and something like that type of idea in the hide, right? It's mm -hmm. not an open surface that anything... I'll give you that. No. And sharpening many, many of the M16s and M21s with the best serrations, the amount of damage I see on those not being yeah. able to withstand normal force and some sort of abuse compared to another form of serration. I can see somebody being very enthusiastic enthusiastic about them when they first get the knife and they cut the first couple things with it and being like, sweet, this is super sharp. And then a month down the road, they cut something and it starts to roll mm -hmm. and they immediately change their opinion of them. Yeah, you can see that. These are definitely in the well, serrated knife. I'll say this much. Funny. 
there's a reason why CRKT hasn't replaced all their serrations with the serrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and even in the same models. They did even try to modify them and come up with the flat top VEF serrations as well. Formidably an improvement to the very fine tooth sort of they points of the start. getting rid of some of the thinner, more sensitive areas mm -hmm. and still trying to affect that, that snappy part, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, VEF. And that was an integral part of the M16s. They were one of the mm -hmm. first knives to have them. And then some other knives started to follow suit after that. Yeah. The, um, the fossils are the first one that popped into my head that yeah. I'm using them as well. <clears throat> Is that it? I think. Yep. Yeah. 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 So now that we jotted in that extra little note there, I guess that's going to be it for this week. I'm uh, going to give a good shout out. Thank you once again to the Cutting Edge Cutlery Company for donating these knives, all of them except for Joseph's one. Uh, were donated tonight for the review for this channel. Uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's a wonderful thing you guys are doing for us. Yeah, yeah. Let's us be able to play with some really awesome options and yeah. be able to show you guys some pretty fun stuff. Do something like so, this. So yeah, yeah, keep it fresh for the channel. So yeah. we're loving that. So yeah. Although they're all black handled. <laughs> <laughs> what else? It, it's the tactically black thing to do. It is tactically yeah. black. I would argue these are tactically black. They are. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, now that we've rounded everything out, that'll be all for tonight. This is Nigel the Smith saying good night for now. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. I am the Iron Joe. And I am XL.ca. Alrighty. Take care, folks. See you again next time. We don't need bigger knife. Bigger. Yeah.